Hello and welcome to another Tech Distractions video. Today we're going to look at a PC which was originally built around 1986 and featured a very early x86 CPU, the 8088. I've made this one as part of the December YouTube campaign, where various retro focus creators celebrate all things DOS during the month of December. I've linked the 2022 playlist down below for convenience. The unicorn didn't always look this clean. It started out looking like this, with lots of rust and debris on the case and motherboard. Over the course of a weekend, I completely disassembled the PC and cleaned down all of the components. I had a friend help me with the rust removal and repaint of the steel parts, and then it was finally restored back to its former glory. This PC was originally built and sold by SME Systems in Australia and was named the Unicorn. It is a clone of the IBM 5160, which was originally released around 1983 and was a follow-up to the original PC, the IBM 5150. The 5160 had a few changes, but notably had 8 expansion slots instead of 5, and had a higher power output on the power supply. IBM discontinued the XT line of PCs around 1987, and clones like this one continued to be sold as entry-level PCs until the early 1990s. First up is the case. Your standard flip-top XT era clone case, emblazoned with the Unicorn logo in big bright phosphor green. Now the power supply. We can see here this is a very early one from Seasonic, the SS150A. It has a QA date code from June 1986. It's in excellent condition and amazingly still runs fine even after 36 years. The motherboard, made by DTK, contains 8 expansion slots, 640 kilobytes of 120 nanosecond DIP RAM, and has an 8088 processor made by AMD running at 10 MHz. These boards were very common in the clone systems back in the day. The floppy drive is a 5.25 inch double density made by YE Data, the YD580B. It is what we call a half height drive, and was very common in IBM PCs and clones of the time. For expansion cards, you'll notice that I'm using ISA cards that are 16 bit, but the motherboard's only got 8 bit slots. This is because many ISA cards could actually run on 8 bit compatibility mode of sorts. The video card is made by Trident and is a TVGA9000 with 512KB of RAM and supporting VGA output. I'd much prefer to use something like a monochrome or CGA card like this one, but unfortunately I don't have a suitable monitor. For I.O. I'm using a Pine branded multi-I.O. card, which can manage IDE interface and floppy drive along with the standard serial and parallel ports. It also has a game port, but for the purposes of this project, I'm disabling this one. For storage, I'm using an IDE to SD adapter and mounting it via the expansion slot using a 3D printed holder. The LED runs to this full height hard disk dummy that is also 3D printed. As the XT cannot handle larger hard disks, I've got an XT IDE ROM loaded on a 3COM Ethernet card. The Ethlink 3 can run in 8-bit mode and there are even configuration applications that have been patched to work on the XT. You should be able to use any network adapter with a boot ROM function with XT IDE. I just like the Ethlink line of cards and find them to work flawlessly. Lastly, we've got a sound card. I would say that any sound card at an XT is overkill, even an adlib, but I did want to play some games that use sound effects and for this, the Sound Blaster 16 value is a suitable choice. This model of Sound Blaster has an input header for the PC speaker and it can route the sound through the sound card. It also has a real OPL3 to emulate that ad lib for those early games. Now we've gone over the components, let's get this machine together and boot it up. First you can see the video BIOS. Then we flick over to the XT BIOS from 1986. Then the XT-IDE BIOS loads up and DOS starts to boot. For this project I'm using DOS 3.31 which gives us a good balance of memory usage and features. And finally we initialize the sound, and for this I'm using an amazing utility made by Jay's Fox called Unisound. Creative obviously didn't make any drivers for the XT, and I'm aware there's some way to get up and running, but I personally find Unisound does everything I need it to do. The SB16 value is not a plug and play card, but Unisound can still manage it using the forward slash CS command. I can then get volume levels set. Now it's time to let this XT do what it does.
Clicking over to the benchmarks now, using Checkup Pro we can see that the CPU is detected as 10 MHz, which is to be expected. The video and math speed is also in line with other Turbo XT setups. Hard disk speed is obviously above normal because we're using a flash based storage rather than old MFM hard disk. Landmark 6 books this PC around 5 MHz AT, which is about right. With Top Bench we can see a score of 8, and we're on par with the standard Turbo XT. If I flick the switch on the rear, we should see it drop down to 4.77 MHz mode for speed sensitive programs. We can easily switch it back to the 10 MHz mode using that same switch. For me, restoring and building up this XT was a satisfying nostalgia trip. Back around 1995 I was rocking a 286 which already was well and truly obsolete by the time, and I remember buying an IBM 5160 off a school friend for not too much. It had the phosphor green screen and Model F keyboard. I bought it purely for the retro experience. I'd sit there and wait for it patiently to load, and I was always trying to figure out what I could run on it. I really wish I did keep it, especially with today's eBay prices. In retro circles, the XT holds a special place in history, seen as the grandparent that started the x86 PC revolution and made MS-DOS a fundamental and required operating system. That's about it for the video. I hope you've enjoyed checking out this project. There are many other December videos out there, so go get amongst them. Until next time, bye for now.